Good morning. Welcome, everybody, from wherever you are. Uh, I'm Carolyn, your host, and welcome to Weekly Minis, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. A few things before we get started. You can reference all of our previously previously recorded weekly minis and more amazing content on our acrobatic arts channel on YouTube. I'll put the direct link in the comments there for you today. If you have any questions while we're live, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know that we're here. Today, we're fortunate to have Jennifer Marcus present on behalf of Baton Arts and teach us two basic skills. Now, Jennifer is a world champion baton twirler, an internationally recognized coach, choreographer, and a former Cirque du Soleil performer. Jennifer represent, uh, has, uh, represented the U.S. for 19 years, winning two world championships and 12 international titles. See, all, she also became the winningest athlete of all time for the United States Twirling Association. Pretty amazing. After ret retiring, she was offered, and it's no surprise, uh, her dream job with Cirque du Soleil's Volta, where she went on to perform in more than 550 shows throughout North America. She is the co-founder of Artist Sports, which hosts baton competitions and camps and promoted the sport and promotes the sport of baton, dance, and color guard. She's also, and we're lucky to have her, one of the creators behind Baton Arts, which is an extension of acrobatic arts, which is why we're thrilled that she's here today teaching us some new things. Jennifer joins us now from her home in South Florida. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We're thrilled to have you. Now, I know you luck out to live in one of those places in the world where it's actually warm enough to twirl outside, but we've got you in your home today because you said it was raining earlier? Yeah, it's raining outside, which it goes with the territory of living in the sunniest place, you know, one of the sunniest places in the world, but also one of the most rainy. <laughs> uh, true, true. Well, uh, we live in Canada where this is uh, the headquarters for acrobatic arts. And so um, I'd like to say I feel sorry for you, but <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> the sun will come yeah. out for you today. Um, so yeah. we're excited to have you, as I said, obviously well-versed in twirling. Um, a lot of people in acrobatic arts, um, we did a, an informal survey on um, Instagram stories this week, and three quarters of our audience has never twirled before. So um, this is a great opportunity I think having you here to talk more about baton, baton arts, the value I know you're going to talk about for studios and, and for people in general, those who have twirled and those who have not. Um, but to teach us some basic skills as we extend that introduction into this incredible art form um, to those who maybe have not seen those possibilities before. So that's right. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so not to leave you hanging. But yes, I think that's that's really why we're excited to have you. I think a lot of people have thought that they knew how to twirl or were curious about it. So I will just pass the baton. No pun intended to you. Ta -da -ta. <laughs> not my first rodeo, uh, but I'll pass the baton off to you and uh, let you go forward. And then we'll reconvene at the end for any questions um, from our um, our audience today. All right. That sounds great. Awesome. Away you go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm so excited to be here to teach you guys uh, some of the fundamentals of baton twirling. It's obviously a very com complex uh, sport and art, but I'm going to try to help you uh, learn just a little bit here today. So, of course, we use a baton, but if you don't have a baton with you, you could use any form of a dowel or stick. Um, I've got my daughter's um, little uh, cleaning set. So it's like a little broom. So something like this would be perfect. It's about a good size. So I'm sure if you look around your house or your studio, you'd be able to find something that could work. But I'm going to use a baton here today. And typically, just to review a couple things in case you haven't heard them before, uh, a baton is typically the length of your arm. So as you see here, I'm using a 30 inch baton, which is about a little longer than my, my arm length, which is really comfortable for me. So when you are working with either a prop um, or something around your house, just keep in mind that typically a baton and how it manipulates best with your body is about the length of your arm. Um, so, so with that being said, with the baton, uh, there's three parts that you'll hear me to refer. The um, big end is called the ball. The little end of a baton is the tip, and then the metal rod in the middle we call the shaft. Um, and so you'll hear me talking about thumb to ball, um, and the ball I would just be referring to the big side of the, the, the bigger end of the baton. 
and then my thumb would be pointing to the bigger end of the baton. So you just might hear me say that today, um, which might help you with, uh, with, the, with some of the terminology. So today I'm gonna be reviewing two skills that you'll find in our Foundations to Baton Twirling course that Baton Arts offers. Um, it's some of the basic movements, uh, but I won't take away that Baton Twirling is complex, like I said earlier. So even though there are basic fundamentals, they still are a little bit challenging and will take a little bit of time and coordination to get it and to feel really comfortable with. So with that being said, let's get started. Grab your prop, baton, whatever you've got. And we're gonna hold it in the center of the baton. And like I said, just a couple seconds ago, thumb to ball, and we're gonna hold it this way. The first skill that we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you today is a two hand twirl. Okay, I'm gonna first show you what that skill looks like so you know what we're about to learn and then I'll break it down for you. So this is the skill that we're gonna learn. It's a two handed twirl. So to get started, you're holding it in the center. You're gonna rotate the baton clockwise around until the, baton, the big end of the baton is facing down. So remember we started thumb to ball and the big end is on your left side. I'll face the other way so that you can see. And you're gonna rotate, the action comes from your wrist. You're gonna rotate the baton all the way around. And when it gets to palm up, you're gonna notice that your body doesn't naturally, unless you're incredibly flexible in your shoulder or something, the baton sort of, your arm sort of stops movement. So when the, the palm is up at that moment, that's when you're gonna open your fingers so that the baton can get into that up and down motion. So if you can see here, I'm holding the baton with between my, four fingers and my um, thumb, kind of like that meaty part right in the middle, that's where I'm holding it. So we start here, you rotate, you get to uh, palm facing the sky, and then you open your hand to this position. And so this is what you wanna start getting, obviously you comfortable, but as you're teaching any students in your studio or other teacher that are, uh, other students that are, are wanting to learn this, you want them to get them comfortable with that motion, kind of opening, rotating and getting to that position where the baton is straight up and down. I sometimes with my younger athletes will refer to the baton as like a little person uh, and the head is the um, ball of the baton, the big part, and then the feet, his feet are the tip. So they understand that it's like a little stick person. Um, you could even go as far if you wanted to get really creative in your studio classes of them making like a little you know, like making little, you know, faces or even get a sticker and put the sticker on the top and like one on the bottom. Just so like if you're referring to the ball on the tip, you could certainly make it more fun and say, okay, find the head of your little person, Susie, um, and make sure Susie's upside down. Is Susie looking at the floor? And then that can really help them understand and identify with what you're communicating. Um, we certainly don't want it to get too complex for them. Um, obviously we don't want it to be too overwhelming. So we're gonna rotate all the way over till the baton is up and down. And at this point, our left hand comes into play. So our left hand, I sometimes say karate chop. You could say chopping the tree, um, slicing the carrot, like whatever you wanna do again to get creative. You could even have them come up, uh, your students come up with a couple fun, fun terms. So once the baton is up and down and your palm is nice and flat, you can see my baton is nice and flat. Um, facing the facing the ceiling. The left hand's gonna come and it's gonna come across. So it goes on top of the other hand and it comes across and it hits the baton. And so we say karate chop, <coughs> excuse me, or chopping the tree. So it comes across and you're gonna have a little bit of momentum and that's gonna actually push the baton over. And then I'll, I'll explain the next step. So we're gonna rotate all the way around the left hand comes up and it karate chops. Now, if you notice, and if you've got some momentum, um, which will, it'll be easier when you do have some momentum, at the moment that you do your karate chop, okay, the baton is gonna rotate over your thumb in that other hand. So you're pushing it with your hand, karate chop, the baton starts moving, and at this point, you want to close these fingers because they're in the way, right? The baton can't really rotate anymore because the baton, the fingers are blocking it. So you're gonna close your fingers, karate chop, starts moving, close those fingers, and the baton is gonna roll over into that left hand, and that would be the end of the skill. So once again, so we're gonna rotate our hand, 
the palm comes up. So do you see how my palms are both facing the ceiling? And I'll give you a little tip in just a second to remind yourself of that. So both palms are up. You start pushing the baton. It rolls over the thumb and into your hand. Let me show you that a couple more times. It rolls, karate chop, and rolls and catch. So as you can see, when it gets to this position, watch, watch my right hand, the, baton, the, the hand that the baton is in. It rolls over the thumb into the hand. And now a common error that you'll see students or you might even be doing here today is your palms not staying up and then um, either your right hand facing the floor or the left hand facing the floor, um, and then it would fall down. Um, the baton's not gonna move the correct way. So what I do with some of my younger athletes is, or even some of my older athletes, they like it too, is I find something that I can put in their hand as a reminder to keep that palm up because it's very easy to rotate um, rotate it the other way. So today here, I'm just using some M&M candies. So when I get to this step, I place an M&M or a Skittle or, you know, a sticker or something that would fall. So maybe not a sticker, but something I'm sure you guys could get creative. And you're going to put the M&M or whatever it is in the child's hand. And then as you do your karate chop, you want them to try to keep the M&M from falling on the floor. So I also place it in the, the hand that the baton is not in. So if I'm turning this, I place the baton or the place the candy in that left hand. And then as they move it over, they get, have the baton and they now have the candy in their hand. Of course, if the candy drops on the floor, then they've obviously slipped their hand over. So once again, it's in the left hand. I rotate. I karate chop and they'll be really mindful because they'll be watching that, that candy and making sure that they don't drop it, which is gonna help the baton roll in because what would happen if they, as they karate chop, they slip it, do you see the, the candy just fell on the floor because they're thinking that they have to push it with their hand as opposed to karate chopping, but keeping that palm up. So that's just a little tip for you. Of course, if they don't drop it, they get to eat it. So that's a bonus special treat for them. Uh, maybe at the beginning when you're teaching this, maybe have a lot of M&Ms on hand because they're probably gonna be dropping it a little bit, but um, you'll see other common errors uh, are um, rotating both hands over like this. And also something to see and notice is sort of something that might look right, but it's actually not quite right. And that's, I just want to point this out just so you can notice if you might be doing it or your, your student would be doing it. But instead of karate chopping, some people you might see place the, the hand on the other side of the baton and just have the baton like just fall straight into it. So they would roll it and they would just put it into the hand. So as you can see, when I'm going fast, it kind of looks similar, but they're sort of missing that whole karate chop part of it, which we want to see. So if you're starting to get comfortable with getting the hang of this and it's rotating and you've got this and it rolls into the hand, you've now completed the skill. So what you can do is you can rotate your hand, the palm facing down, pass it into the right hand and then do it again. So now we can do a couple multiple in a row and you can start getting comfortable. And that would be a two-handed twirl. Of course, one is a two-handed twirl, but you could do multiple in a row. And then as you become more confident and more proficient, you can really rotate and get, get some speed and excitement and some um, flow going with that. And it's really fun. And now you might, if you're in the dance world or any other um, art, you know, besides the ton twirling, you could certainly use something like this if you're using a prop. Uh, in one of your dances, like a, maybe a broom or a mop or a cane, being able to do something like this really shows the manipulation of the prop, having some spin, and your athlete or your dancer would know how to do this, and that it can apply to a different variety of forms. So that's really exciting. So hopefully I've answered all of your questions regarding, or, or questions you might have. We'll certainly have a question answer um, Time some later, but hopefully I've answered some 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 of the things you might be wondering while you're practicing this at home. So that, guys, is a two-handed twirl. Super exciting, right? 
So that's the first skill we covered today. Uh, the second skill we're gonna do today is a horizontal wrist twirl. So once again, let me show you what that is and then I'll break it down. So horizontal, let me step back for a second. We've got two main patterns in the in baton twirling. We've got vertical and we've got horizontal. So the vertical pattern is when the baton is rotating this way. So it's, I'll turn to the side so you can see. So it's sort of going like up and down. Horizontal is when it's going this way, okay? So do you see how we also might refer to it as flat? So horizontal and flat, it's flat like a table and vertical would be up and down. So this one, this next skill that you're gonna learn is horizontal, flat, so it's gonna be nice, hopefully, and on pattern. So what we're gonna do is a horizontal wrist twirl. So let me show you what that looks like, okay? So what we're gonna do here is, again, we're gonna start sum to ball. Um, it's a really good practice just to always start sum to ball um, for you and your students. So you just have like a lot of awareness of the baton and you can refer to it and everyone's on the same page. So you're gonna hold the baton in the center and we're gonna be holding it up and down, straight up and down. And so now how we build and grow into the horizontal wrist twirl is, <laughs> it, it, we could use another little funny like anecdote to help get you there. So we're holding it up and down. And so what I usually typically try to share is imagine you've got like a big cauldron, like you're a witch and you've got a big cauldron or a big bowl of soup, something you're gonna stir. And so you hold it up and down. And so you're gonna use the bottom of the rear baton for the tip and you're gonna start stirring that soup. So I'm sure you've all done this, you know, over, over your stove, uh, mixing something. And so that's what that motion is gonna be. And as you start mixing your soup, imagine the pot's getting bigger and bigger. And so you wanna now really start rotating and, and circling and stirring really big. And you're gonna start adjusting your grip with your hand because at first, at the, at the beginning, you might be holding it really tight. And as you can see, if you're gripping it, try it, if you grip your baton or stick really tight, it's really limited in the motion. And so as you maybe open your hand and loosen your grip a little bit, you can see that you can now stir that pot a little bit bigger and you'll continue stirring and loosening your grip until it gets to what we call horizontal and that would be a horizontal wrist twirl so you're the the big end of the baton is rotating above the arm and the little tip is going underneath the arm so you're going above the arm underneath the arm so if you go back to that little reference that i shared earlier of like the head and the little feet or if your kid's using a sticker, um, like a flower and a heart, you would say, okay, look at the head and then the feet go underneath. Look at the head and then the feet go underneath. Um, I think I heard something recently I'd never heard before of a cat and like a cat and mouse chasing each other. So the cat's going over and the mouse is going under. The cat's going over, the mouse is going on, under. And so you then start just rotating, keeping a really loose wrist, always holding the baton in the center. So you don't want it so loose that your baton starts sliding around and that you lose control of it. You definitely want enough of a grip to continue holding it in the center of your baton. But where I loosen it is sort of that, I always have a pretty tight grip between my thumb and my pointer finger. Um, but the where I start like loosening that grip is from the bottom, that pinky into the center of my hand. That's how I kind of open it. And then when I'm doing this, I'm when I'm doing the wrist twirl, the bottom, those, those fingers down below are really not um, gripping it too tight. Of course, this takes some wrist flexibility. So your typical wrist warmups, um, um, promoting healthy wrist flexibility in your classes, um, that's gonna help with some of these motions that the action comes from the wrist, like something like this. You're probably gonna see some of your um, athletes that are newer to the sport doing it, and it's gonna look a little bit off pattern, or a little bit wild. And so just having them help understand the grip of the baton and going back to understanding you've got a big bowl of soup and you're stirring your soup until your soup is so big that they've, they're now doing that horizontal wrist twirl without even realizing it. So of course, everything that we do in ton arts, acrobatic arts, all of the arts we do on the right side and we do it on the left side. So just, just so you guys have the information, if you were doing it in your left hand, the baton direction goes the same way. So 
So even though one's in the right hand and one's in the left hand, when we're doing horizontal wrist twirls, they both go the same direction. They both go counterclockwise. So that's a little bit different than probably most other things that you're gonna learn in the sport because typically the standard direction when you're doing in your right hand, it goes one way and then the left the other. But when it comes to horizontal wrist twirls, they go the same direction. So quickly, I'm just gonna show you in the left hand. So left hand, you're holding it in the center and you've got your big bowl of soup. So just the same, you start stirring your soup and the soup gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you can loosen your grip with some control, you'll find that you're doing horizontal wrist twirls. And I'll show you from the side so you can see that they're nice and flat. They're not up like this, okay? So you really want that baton close to your arm as it's passing above. And then remember the tip goes underneath. So above and underneath. So you'll get it in your right hand and then you can always pass it and then practice it in your left hand as well. Uh, and I probably should have mentioned that earlier and forgive me, please. Uh, the two handed twirl, of course, that skill can be done in the left hand. So let me just quickly re rewind real quick and just show you that before we wrap up here today. So if it's in the left hand, thumb to ball as always, you're gonna do the same thing as the right hand. You're gonna open your hand, you're gonna twist it until it's up and down. Remember that palm is facing the ceiling. You come in with that right hand this time and this slices the tree, karate chop, it pushes it over. Remember both palms at this point are facing the ceiling. This is the moment where they wanna flip, keep them facing the ceiling and push it into that right hand into a full grip center of the baton. So once again, we rotate, karate chop, push it and catch. Sometimes a little bit more momentum is gonna help this move along. You just, as you're increasing the momentum, you might see that your hands are wanting to rotate um, palm to the ground. And so that's always the best reminder. So same thing in your left hand, remember with the M&M &M little trick, you put it in the center, you push it, try to keep the M&M, and when they grab it, they've got both their baton and the M&M, and then they can pop it in their mouth and have a little treat. So just as a review today, we learned the two-hand twirl in both the right hand and the left hand, and the horizontal wrist twirl in both the right hand and the left hand. Those are gonna be two of the skills, as I mentioned before, in the Foundation of Baton Twirling um, course that we offer here at Baton Arts. Um, but they're also just really great skills to use in your walk of life, wherever that may be, whether you're man manipulating props in the dance world, um, or you've just got a stick and you wanna just have some fun. Um, we encourage you to get out there and twirl and um, spread the love of baton twirling. So that's all I have here for you. I'm gonna pass this back to Carolyn and uh, I think we're gonna take some questions if we have them. That's right. So uh, first of all, Jennifer, like I think we have just uh, prompted a whole other generation or uh, adult generation of baton twirlers with that. So awesome job. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I'm going to throw down the gauntlet now. If you've already taken the fundamentals course or the module one, we want to see your skills. If you haven't, we also want to see your skills. So share with us on social media, practicing what Jennifer has taught you today. This is on replay here on Facebook Live. You can come back to it and review all of the new skills you've learned and uh, be brave, be bold, teach it to somebody else, a smaller person, a bigger person or yourself and share with us on social media. We'd love to see uh, how it goes. In the meantime, like Jennifer said, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments now. You have a uh, the, the one of the, the most professional, I don't know if that's a thing, the most professional, you have a very talented and skilled uh, teacher uh, and experienced performer here to ask these questions to and she's happy to take those questions from you. Um, as uh, Jennifer mentioned, this is part of the Baton Arts syllabus, which is available through um, an app called the Baton Arts app. I'm going to, um, this is mostly, Jennifer, this is like uh, what you taught today would be in that primary level, correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So most of the, the, these two skills, the basics and the progressions that we believe in in baton arts and, and um, acrobatic arts would begin in primary. And if I can, if technology seems to be not on my side today, but I'm going to hope that I can share my um, phone with you. Um, and every time I go live, it doesn't work. Um, but maybe today oh. is the day. Um, I can see it on my screen. 
there it is. It's a bit cut off. I'm just going to move it over and see if that makes any difference or it makes it worse. We won't spend too much time on me trying to figure this out, but you can see it. There it goes. Okay. So um, there's just a bit of a delay. So as you can see, when you open up the app, you have a, a whole overview of the syllabus. You can look by level. Uh, you can also search uh, certain skills. You can go anyway. There's lots of options here. You can also have your favorites. So when we go to level primary and we look at the two hand twirl, for example, we can see a student student um, demonstrating exactly what Jennifer demonstrated for you. We can also take our student and we can slow them down uh, by 50%. Uh, so we can break down the move for it's like having an assistant in your class. The student can also be slowed down even further. We can change it to um, a different way of looking at it in terms of the sides. So we can flip the visual, we can turn it over and around. I mean, these things will have their own application um, as you're working, but uh, this also will link you to the, the next progression, um, teaching tips and tools that we have. Um, um, this is a presented by Jennifer here. She's got when you're teaching your athletes to two handed exactly. twirl. tips and ideas as well. We have um, featured items that are teaching tools, progress cards, coloring pages, uh, lesson plans already preloaded for you. So if you're wanting to be able to uh, be guided through the syllabus, there's lesson plans. Uh, your entire uh, module one manual is here as well as tutorials. And we continue to um, add those by uh, well-known, reputable, uh, not only our co-creators, uh, Mark Nash, Jennifer Marcus, and Loren Dermody, but um, famous world champions Champions like Stacy Singer and others who present their um, very best. So this is actually on this month. This app is on promotion. Um, it is on sale for 10% off till the end of the month. Um, this is our first ever spin sale. So you can receive 10% off the lifetime of both the Aerial Arts app and the Baton Arts digital syllabi. Um, and you can visit us on Instagram or Facebook on Acrobatic Arts or Baton Arts to get that code. And I'll put all those links in the comment section at the end of this. So, Jennifer, um, with that being said, I did my spiel, but there are no further questions at this time. Um, but is there anything else that you'd like to add that you think I missed talking about the syllabus or the program itself? Uh, the only thing that I would add is right now the current program goes from the primary level through level six. And so um, it really does it does do a wonderful job of building on those progressions and creating a full comprehensive um, foundation for a baton twirler to be able to uh, go into the competition world or the performance world or whatever they're looking for. Um, baton twirling as every art takes a lot of practice, determination, patience. Um, and like you did a beautiful job explaining the app does such such a good job of breaking down all of the skills and giving you the tools and tips as a teacher of how to teach it and what to focus on. So I really encourage um, if you're interested in um, either baton twirling or even manipulation of any props, I think this uh, app would help you guys. Yes, and I was going to say, I think you bring up a, a great point that for today, this is primary level one progressions from the baseline, just like in any other uh, venture that we do, like aerial arts or acrobatic arts. These are the skills that we can do at this level. There's going to be a place in time where our, our students are into um, skills that are beyond our capacity. This is where the app becomes even a, a greater tool in the opportunities that it creates in sharing tips, ideas and also spotting information for those uh, when it becomes relevant um, as well. So uh, with that, let's wrap things up. Jennifer, thank you okay. so much for being here. I did put some of the links uh, inside the comment section. Um, so if people have anything else they want to resource, um, but you can also put more questions uh, inside that uh, comment section as well, and we'll get back to you. And I know Jennifer uh, would be happy to answer your questions after the presentation as well. Sorry. So Jennifer, thank you so much again for being here. Thank you. Thank we you. As always, it's wonderful working with Acrobatic Arts, you and the whole community. Well, we are so honored and privileged to have you a uh, part of this community. So 
Thank you. And if you'd like more information about Baton Arts training certification, where you can learn more, not only about the fundamentals of baton skills, but the progression and fundamentals of sound teaching, we have a number of courses online and in person that are available to you and may be coming to your area. The summer is a perfect time to level up and teachers spots are already going fast. This is your time. If you'd like more information about Baton Arts, I put a lot of links in the comments today, but visit batonarts.com. Um, thank you once again to Jennifer and teachers for joining us for this weekly mini. Join us next week where we'll be back in the studio working with master teacher Loren Dermody with a focus on keeping your preschoolers engaged. And that is all level preschoolers, baton arts, aerial arts, acrobatic arts. We'll thrilled to have Miss Loren back. You can learn more about acrobatic arts and our programs at acrobaticarts.com. Join us again next week. We will see you then. Thanks for being here.